Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are previewing week two of college football. We're talking right now with Steve from collegefootballwinning.com, who is a college football specialist, has a great record at his site. And uh, last week he gave us a free pick, which cashed. And uh, so he's 1-0 on the year with us so far. And uh, we'll find out how he did in week one at his site. Steve from collegefootballwinning.com. How did you do in uh, week one at your site? Because I know last year you had a ridiculous record. What was it like in the upper 60s, right? Well, uh, this is something you might not even know, Peter, and I want to explain to you, and definitely the, uh, I think most listeners do not know this. At collegefootballwinning.com, all we do is focus on college football betting analysis 365 days a year. We are a company founded on making betting recommendations algorithmically. We call those algorithmic betting selections our formula. Okay, so far you know all of that. What you might not know, Peter, and what people listening might not know is that our formula relies on current season, both betting data and on the field performance data. So that formula that went 66.18% against the spread last year does not start until after we get usually four or five weeks of betting data on the, I'm sorry, on field performance data. So this formula, just like last year, we didn't start until week five, the year before didn't start until week six six of college football, mm. believe it or not. But we're anticipating uh, after week four, we'll be able to start giving out formula picks. So right now, anyone listening to this, they have literally not missed a single formula betting recommendation from us. So they have, uh, you know, through week four to sign up with us. And uh, that formula is, like we said, 66.18% against the spread last year, 63.04% against the spread lifetime. So I hope people want to join us. They have not missed anything with us yet not missed any formula picks, so go to collegefootballwinning.com, put in coupon code SBR10, that's SBR10, and you will get 10% off of any membership we're currently offering. And once again, that means the entire season of formula picks, and we still offer a 100% money back guarantee on the entire season. In week two, you have chosen Texas Tech and UTEP, another kind of interesting game. Uh, you know, last week, your first game was a was kind of interesting selection, turned out to be a winner, and this one is also interesting. UTEP is a 20 and a half point home underdog. The uh, total is 65, and the line opened at about 18 and a half, so uh, the money has come in on Texas Tech. Total opened at about 65, went initially down to 63, now it's back up to 65, and you know, Texas Tech is kind of an undisciplined team. Uh, you know, they can, they, they do sometimes, they, they're also kind of like a bully kind of team. So they do sometimes cover these kinds of spreads when they're uh, beating up on, a, on an overmatched team. But then again, you know, they're the kind of team that also falls short when they're, a, when they're a, a, a big favorite like this. I would take a shot with the over 65 here. Probably we're going to see a lot of offense, a lot of scoring. Again, Texas Tech's game uh, last week, I think the total was in the 70s. It went over anyway. Here we have 65. I'd take a shot with the over. Is that what you like here? Actually, I have no official opinion on okay. the over. Here's what I, I would like to look at is last week, UTEP beat New Mexico, okay, by a touchdown on the road as 10 point underdogs. So they're against the spread margin of victory in that game. This is UTEP was plus 17 points. Now, UTEP is one of just 16 teams in the FBS this year with a coaching staff that is fully intact from 2013. Now, what's the big deal about that? The big deal is continuity. So continuity of, of scheme, continuity of program, continuity of coaching. Those teams, how important is continuity at the beginning of the season? Those 16 teams went 12-4 and four against the spread in week one, Peter. So that is important early in the season, and we are certainly week two early in the season. So let's look at the other side. Well, how did Texas Tech do last week? They played FCS Central Arkansas. They beat them 42 to 35, but Texas Tech failed to cover the spread by 27 points. That means, obviously, it's an against the spread margin of loss of negative 27 is, is what their margin of victory was, negative 27 in terms of the spread. That's, that was the worst against the spread margin of loss in week, when, in week one for any FBS-FCS matchup, and there were plenty of them last week. So what's the... what? What do we take away from this? We're looking for similar examples, precedents of this in college football's betting past. And we came up with one that we thought was particularly uh, pertinent here. And it was Wisconsin of 2012. Game one, Wisconsin plays FCS, Northern Iowa. Wisconsin was a 32-point favorite at home. 
They won straight up, but they failed to cover the spread by, guess what, exactly 27 points, just like Texas Tech of last week. Then they went on the road to Oregon State. Wisconsin closed as a six-point road favorite and lost straight up by three points. They're against the spread. Margin of loss was nine. So it's negative nine margin of victory against the spread. So here we have Texas Tech, you know, not doing, not showing particularly well or not well at all against an FCS team, but they still got the victory. So people could sort of excuse them thinking, ah, they still won. But against the spread, huge difference. So we're, we're thinking that odds makers seldom make radical power ratings adjustments in a single week. So one of the most, for example, one of the most popular published power ratings lowered Texas Tech after last week's performance by just 1.28 points. So not even a point and a half. And they raised UTEP after their surprise margin of victory uh, of 17 points last week. They raised them by just 67 hundredths of a point. So that net change for both both teams is 1.95 points. So less than two points. So we think that does not accurately reflect how much better UTEP actually is, and, and not, not worse, but relative to uh, power ratings and point spreads, how much worse Texas Tech actually is. So we think there should have been a greater power ratings difference from week one to week two. It's not there yet, so it's going to take more, more time in the season, which is why we're jumping on this game now. So here's what we like about the betting line. This game opened, as you said, Texas Tech minus 19. And by our bookmakers' power ratings, and we come up with multiple power ratings in our own, but we also come out with what we call sort of a Vegas line, so we know what bookmakers should be posting, and then we start to uh, investigate why they are not posting such a line in any direction if it is different from what we think they're going to be putting out. So that, sh that game uh, showed some value or that line, I should say, when it opened, showed some quote-unquote value on the Texas Tech side when they opened. And our first thought was, as a public better, the thinking is, really? Texas Tech with the high-powered passing attack and the, the famous Cliff Kingsbury, who's like a rock star coach, he's their head coach, facing 2013's worst passing defense by yards allowed per passing attempt, and there's value on the Texas Tech side? That appears, Peter, to be an enticement to bet Texas Tech. And it, it's an enticement by the bookmakers for the public to bet Texas Tech. And sure enough, that's exactly how the betting has been going so far. Some line concerns or line issues. Texas Tech is still getting the majority of the public betting, like 67%, so like two-thirds of the public betting. Here's our position. If this line goes past Texas Tech minus 21, and by the way, they're at minus 21 at a few places here in Las Vegas and also online offshore, so if it goes past Texas Tech minus 21, meaning minus 22, minus 23, then we, we might rethink that enticement to bet Texas Tech theory. So then what we're saying is don't bet this game right now. Watch this line. If it stays at or under Texas Tech minus 21, then take UTEP minus 20 and a half or minus 21. And by the way, Peter, do not buy that hook. Historically in college football, buying the hook at plus 20 and a half to get plus 21 is not worth the price. We have an article explaining exactly when to buy hooks in college football. It's at our site, collegefootballwinning.com. If uh, you know, you could search our site or you could even just Google the question, should I buy the hook in college football? And we come up as one of the top five Google search results. So uh, that's our position right now. You watch this line and wait to see if that line goes over plus 21 for UTEP. If it does, you're probably going to stay away from this. It's probably not an enticement. But if it stays where it's been and the betting continues to, to look like what, it, what it's been so far, the, the smart side looks like UTEP minus 20 and a half minus 21. I'm sorry, UTEP plus 20 and a half plus 21. Thanks so much, Steve, from collegefootballwinning.com. Like in UTEP plus 20 and a half college football week two. Thanks, Steve. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.